Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Siege of Boralis during Season 1 of The War Within. We're going to go through the main boss and trash mechanics in order for you to beat the dungeon in Mythic difficulty. In the first area, you're going to meet the Iron Tide Raiders, which are going to hook you in and do AoE damage around them, and then cast their Savage Tempest, which is a whirlwind around them, so you need to run out and keep your distance. Interrupt the blackish bolts of the wave shapers, but make sure to always save an interrupt for their water shield. It greatly reduces the damage they take and explodes for AoE damage once it expires. The bombers are going to throw bombs around and leave fire patches on the ground, just move away from those. And be careful of the enforcers who are going to cast frontals every now and then. The packs here also have gutters which are going to smack your tank and reduce their haste, stacking as well as some shredders which are going to jump around randomly and backstab people. The first boss is Chopper Red Hook, he's going to fixate on players and start chasing them. If he catches you, you die. So if you're on the hook, make sure to run away and try to lure the boss on top of the bombs that fall from the sky on random locations. They damage and stun the boss, making him take increased damage for 10 seconds. Keep in mind that the bombs have a timer and if they're about to expire, preferably your tank needs to run on top of them and detonate them. They will take some damage, but that's better than letting the bomb explode, which is going to do damage to everybody in your party. The boss is occasionally going to hook everybody towards him doing AoE damage and then casting a big swirly that you need to run away from. And throughout the fight, ads are gonna keep spawning, some of them are going to be power shots doing damage to random targets. And the other type is cleavers who have a huge frontal line that you need to keep dodging. Cleave down the ads, don't let them overwhelm you and keep kiting the boss into the bombs until he dies. The next area has some curse blades which are going to apply a stacking curse on your tank increasing the damage they take. Having a curse dispel here to help them is quite useful. Be very careful with the Ashvein commanders and their bolstering shout. If you don't interrupt that and it goes off, all the mobs around them are going to take 75% less damage for 8 seconds. And they're also going to cast Trample, they mark a target and charge towards them doing damage in the small impact area, also stunning everybody on the way, so make sure you move to the side. After a few packs, make sure to hide behind the barrels, as the mobs ahead are going to start an artillery, and you need to wait for the windows when they're not shooting to run ahead and engage in combat. These packs have spotters which are going to shoot bombs from the sky in a small circular area that you need to avoid. The pool before the second boss includes some deckhands that are going to put yet another debuff on your tank that increases the damage they take, and the cannoneers are going to fire a huge frontal that you need to dodge, along with all the other mechanics from the mobs in this pool. Captain Lockloot is the next boss, she's going to randomly jump around, shoot at people and every now and then she's also going to fire fiery ricochet. This is a shot that bounces to two additional players and leaves dots on them. You should stay behind her as she has a frontal that she aims at the tank. And she's also going to go for mass bombardment, spawning circles at the feet of your teammates that you need to keep dodging. At 66 and 33% she becomes immune to damage and jumps back to her ship. A set of odd spawns, two deckhands and one cannoneer, dodge the cannoneer frontal and kill the adds as you're constantly going to get bombarded from the ship. And you have to keep moving around and finding safe areas. Or don't. Anyways, once you kill the cannoneer, he drops a cannon that you need to pick up and shoot at the boss to bring her back to the platform. Once you do that, phase 1 continues with the same mechanics that we mentioned previously. After you kill the boss, you have to hide behind the barrels again until you manage to scare off the snipers that are gonna be shooting at you. And get to the next area where you're gonna be fighting some pillagers, make sure to interrupt their stinky vomit. And try to stun the banana rampage from the buccaneers as it does AoE damage and shoots around banana peels that stun people if they walk on top of them. Also be careful when they cast going bananas as this is a whirlwind doing AoE damage in small area around them. The Tempest mobs are going to cast water bolts, interrupt as many of these as you can, but definitely save an interrupt for their choking waters cast. This one not only does damage, but also silences the target, so you definitely don't want it to go off. The big demolishers are going to cast terrifying roar, fearing everybody in a short range, so make sure you stay out. And they're also going to cast the uninterruptable crushing slam, which does damage to everybody in your party. 
The packs just before the third boss have a couple of new mobs introduced. The destroyers are going to cast ferocity buffing their own haste. While the invaders stack a poison on your tank. Which could be problematic if you don't have a dispel for it. These packs feature mobs from all the other parts of the dungeon. And once you kill them you can fight the third boss. Hadao is going to cast Breakwater, which summons Swirlies at the feet of a few players. You want to bait those away from the center statue. In a few seconds they explode doing AoE damage and leave patches on the ground that you need to avoid. The boss also has a frontal that should be aimed away from the party and the center. And at 100 energy he summons Tidal Surge. Two subsequent waves come from random directions from the sides of the room and you need to use the statue in the middle to avoid them. That would be the reason that you want to keep the area around it clean. And that's pretty much it. All these mechanics keep repeating until you manage to kill the boss. There is no thrash that follows. You run down a platform avoiding some swirlies and you're at the last boss. Or whatever that thing is. You start the fight on platform number one. There is a demolishing terror there and your tank needs to stay in melee. Otherwise this thing goes bananas and kills everybody. Occasionally the boss is going to throw a whole bunch of swirlies in the fighting platform. So make sure you dodge those. And the tentacle is going to cast slam which does AoE damage and knocks everybody back. So be prepared for that. The worst mechanic is called putrid waters. The boss puts two debuffs on two random players. Which do a bunch of upfront damage and leave a nasty dot on the targets. You should dispel one of them as quickly as possible and then spam heals to the second one praying that they live. After you kill the big tentacle you are allowed to use the cannon but in order to do that you have to kill the small tentacle and free the engineer that is going to fix it. Once that happens somebody goes into the cannon presses a button you do a third of the boss's health in damage and then you move to the next platform on the site. Everything here repeats, kill the big tentacle, kill the small tentacle, fire the weapon, go to the third platform, do all of the things again and then you basically kill the boss. If you manage to make it this far you've beaten Siege of Boralis and if you manage to subscribe to this channel and press the notification bell you will make sure not to miss the rest of the Mythic Plus dungeon guides for season 1 in the War Within as well as some other Mythic Plus content. I'll see you there, now get out of here.